Hi, it's Doug Holland LMT with another massage tip for massage professionals. In sports, we will have patients come in that have had either a blunt force a trauma injury or compression and that can cause uh, scapular issues such as winged scapula. Now there's really two conditions that can take place with winged scapula. We have serratus anterior palsy and we have trapezius palsy. We have one or the other. Now uh, what I did is I uh, put these uh, pie plates down to kind of help set an example of visualization of actually what the difference of the two is and we're going to discuss the difference of the two but what we want to do is just basically pretend this is a patient face down in the prone position and that this blue line here represents the spine and then of course these two halves of the pie plates represent the scapula which is basically the shoulder blade as we know so what, how can we uh, discern the difference between the, the two conditions well the first condition which uh, is more common is serratus anterior palsy now what that is is there's been damage to the long thoracic nerve that comes to the serratus anterior which is the muscle that is responsible for abducting and and which is protraction of the scapula it also assists in uh, elevation and rotation of the shoulder blade upward so it also assists in that but its primary movement is protraction or abduction of the shoulder itself so it also pins the the shoulder blade down nice and tight to the ribs so if there is compression or you know or damage to the nerve innervation of the long thoracic nerve how can we tell that it might be this condition well first of all we're gonna see an elevation a weakness and a lifting of the shoulder blade like this that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna see a cupping motion the next thing that we're gonna see is a movement of the inferior border of the scapula towards a vertebral border or medially so the inferior border will be medial and then you'll see that cupping action it'll be lifted like this and you can tuck your fingers underneath that so now the muscle is weak it's not pinning the uh, scapula down and it's certainly no longer uh, causing abduction or protraction of the shoulder anymore which now means that the pectoralis minor on the front is going to have to do most of the work in protraction and it's going to fatigue it and they're going to have a lot of sometimes the pain that people are having in their front is just overuse because the um, serratus anterior is not doing the job that it's supposed to be doing so an individual will either have weakness in this area or they'll actually feel pain underneath the shoulder blade and that will be one of the signs now what would be the other condition that would be trapezius palsy now that is the accessory nerve that runs the trapezius muscle and what we will see is an asymmetrical uh, drop in the shoulder let's say it's the right shoulder that's that's the problem we will see the scapula actually lower and then it moves the uh, inferior border actually moves towards the axillary part of the armpit or laterally so it's going to be moving laterally and down laterally and down and then we'll know that that's probably the trapezius because the trapezius muscle is uh, very helpful in scapular elevation or movement upward right shrugging the shoulders this is one of its main movements lifting the shoulders like this so if there's injury to the accessory nerve not only can it not do the shrugging the scapular elevation but it's going to drop and then you're going to have other uh, other muscles such as the teres major actually pulling it uh, laterally like that so basically the, when I'm looking at the, the, the back of the shoulders of the patient and they're describing shoulder pain, I'm looking for symmetry and if I don't see symmetry then I'm looking at the inferior border which way is it going if it's going this way then I know it's serratus anterior if it's going laterally like that then I know that it's probably the trapezius muscle itself now once we've made our assessment 
Uh, we want to get them to a doctor as quickly as possible for a diagnosis by a doctor so that we know how we can further help the individual. Uh, if it's a, a, a real serious injury to that nerve, they might even need to have surgery, and that's the doctor's decision to make. However, if the doctor uh, gives us permission to address the issue uh, neuromuscularly uh, through the soft tissue itself, then what, if it's the accessory nerve and it's uh, trapezius palsy, then that, we know that one of the cranial nerves, that passes through the posterior triangle of the neck. So we're going to be able to work the, the traps and the, the deeper muscles of the neck uh, out to that shoulder blade. Because what's going to happen is if they do have trapezius palsy and we see a scapular depression here, that's going to put a lot more uh, stress on the, the rhomboids and the levator scapulae. It's absolutely because they're going to try their best to elevate the scapula itself. Uh, that's going to be their job. Now, if it's the long thoracic nerve that's creating the problem for serratus anterior palsy, well, then we'll be able to work deeper along the thoracic spine here and dig in and do our best to bring circulation nerve innervation up underneath the serratus anterior itself to, to help that. So, I'm going to have to shoot another video on, on how I actually do that with a patient, but I just thought this was a, just a nice, easy way, a discernible way to tell the difference between uh, these two wing scapula conditions, serratus anterior palsy and trapezius palsy. I hope you enjoyed that tip, and just remember this, if there's no discomfort on the table, well, we know it's nothing more than a foo-foo massage.